It seems anticlimactic to celebrate the wise men coming to give gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh on Epiphany Sunday when we celebrate their coming on Christmas Eve. After all, how can you top the dramatic entrance of the wise men singing as they press down, process down the aisle and all of their regalia? Moreover, don't you think it's the worth the price of admission to see Steve Bexler in a turban? I'd come. And yet, historically, we know that the wise men came much later to the house of Joseph and Mary in Bethlehem. But why Bethlehem and not Nazareth? There was nothing preventing them from returning to their home in Nazareth. It seemed strange that they would stay two years until Herod sought to kill the child. Did Mary and Joseph decide to make a new life in Bethlehem? Or is this Matthew's way of telling us that Jesus of Nazareth is really the long-awaited Messiah who was born in Bethlehem according to the prophet Micah? Bart Ehrman, a professor of New Testament studies at the University of Chapel Hill, certainly thinks it's the latter. Uh, come to my class on Wednesday night and see what else he thinks. I'm going to be teaching a class on how Jesus became God. And yet, I would have you focus not on the historicity of this story, but on its meaning. Matthew is convinced that Jesus is the Messiah not because of his birth, but because of his resurrection. Because the crucified one became the risen one, Jesus really is the king of the Jews, as the inscription on the cross mockingly proclaimed to the gawkers and the onlookers. So Matthew must be thinking to himself that there must have been clues along the way that we missed. Details that we overlooked in our three years of being with Jesus. And like a good detective, Matthew searches the scripture and discovers this text from Isaiah that one day Israel as a nation would experience a great reversal of fortune. Instead of paying tribute to Assyria, then to Babylon, one day nations will come to pay tribute to Israel because the golden age has been ushered in by the Messiah, the anointed one, to rule over Israel as the descendant of David. It matters not that the wise men were not kings in the strictest sense of the word. Their gifts of gold and frankincense were prophesied long ago. And the light that has dawned, depicting a new age in Israel fulfilling its destiny as a light to the nation. The light from the star guides the nations from the east to the true King of kings, Lord of lords, the Savior of the world. The only problem is that the present king, King Herod, does not recognize the lordship of Jesus Christ. But the wise men do. For in their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Christ child, gold befits his royal status. Frankincense his priestly status, and myrrh, his death, that brings about life for all who believe. But do we really believe in what the birth of Christ means for the world? For those who live in darkness because of fear or ignorance, or because of hatred and prejudice, or because our view of reality has been flattened so much to the extent that we only believe in facts as truth. There are many reasons to doubt 
the truth about the Christ child. But if we will take that proverbial leap of faith to trust the light that illumines our way in epiphany, we will discover that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Salvation has dawned for the nations, and it is the way of Jesus and not the way of Herod. Walter Brueggemann, a retired professor of Old Testament at Columbia Seminary, makes this point clearly in emphasizing that the wise men initially missed the place where Jesus was to be born by nine miles. The distance between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Jerusalem is the seat of power where the rulers rule the ruled. Isaiah sees the restoration of Israel emanating from Jerusalem, whereas Micah sees it from the bottom to the top, from a small town called Bethlehem. Noted more for its connection to shepherds and sheep than a seat of power. And yet this is where the rebirth of Israel begins with the birth of the Messiah. Israel's newborn king will be a shepherd king like David, but even better than David. And leaving the 99 for the sake of the one. Even better because this one will go so far as laying down his life for all those entrusted into his care. From such small beginnings comes the rebirth of hope and salvation for the nations. And they repeat this from such small beginnings comes the rebirth of hope and salvation for the nations. For your salvation is wrapped in a bundle of joy. Come and see for yourself, and if you do, I bet you too will depart by another way as the wise men did that day in the act of worship. Arise and shine, for the light has dawned, and the glory of the Lord is all about you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.